everyone. Uh, this is Tony Van Schoik, and I am really excited because I'm all about technology and new things that are going to disrupt uh, the industry as far as uh, revenue, sales, and leadership is concerned. And so today, you guys, I have two amazing gentlemen that are sharing with us. Um, we have Alex and Todd. Um, and the great thing is, is that they introduced this to me probably about three months ago, and I was so excited on how this was going to help people, not just with personal and professional development and, and really peak performance, but it's going to help your teams, your clients, um, people that are a part of, of your business, and it's going to be completely duplicable, and it's going to be, it, it, it will be the world's largest digital library um, with these amazing experts and think tanks and people that are going to be bringing to you the best platform and the best learning examples for success. So without further ado, um, you guys, I'm going to introduce um, the CEO and one of the co-founders. His name is Alex. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting him back in April, and he shared with me um, all of the wonderful things that we're going to be doing. And I say we because I was so blessed um, that I was asked to be an instructor. So more on that to come. But I really want you to get a feel of how this can help you in your business and people that are, you're serving um, in, you know, in your business as well. So Alex, without further ado, why don't you share with us a little bit more about Fuel? Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction, Tony. That was awesome. Uh, very excited about this. You know why, Tony? Because uh, it's so exciting when <laughs> when you bump into something that becomes a, a standard or, or a, a, a standard process for moving forward in life. Uh, I think there are lots of little technologies that have just popped up and all of a sudden that's just we can't go without them. These little things, for instance, right? And so it's exciting to 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 be sitting here and a week after launch. So if you're hearing this, everyone, this is literally to the day, seven days after we launched, which we launched on July 8th, 2024, again, depending on when you're listening to this. And once one thing uh, as, as being a serial co-founder, this is my 10th company um, with my um, first company with my amazing partner, Todd Duncan, which we'll meet in just a second. Uh, but my 10th company that I've launched, uh, I've been launched companies since, since I was 20. And there's this thing that happens. There's this excitement and fear, right? This excitement because you're doing something new and interesting and fun. And, and the fear is what if the way that you want people to experience this service, this project, this platform, this concept, this thing, this idea, what if people don't experience it the way you would expect them to? And after a week, just a week of being live, so everyone should know this, we have in, in just one week, 10 organizations went live with us, three national uh, multinational organizations, Australia and Canada, are, are are on board, plus the United States. So three different nations already live in the platform, and the the results, the things that people say, is actually beyond what I could have imagined people would say, um, and that is is very exciting. And so we're about to show you uh, the vision, the idea, and uh, behind the scenes, get to experience some of this for yourself. Uh, but before I get going, let me. Uh, introduce Todd, my co-founder, the, the man that actually has had this, this, this burning desire for something like this for a very long time. And as we all know, everything happens exactly when and how it's supposed to happen. And so here we are. So Todd, um, jump in. Hey, thanks, Alex. And, and Tony, thanks again. I'm sharing my gratitude, as Alex did with you. And uh, it's, it's always fun to partner with leaders that have changed the world and want to continue that. So, you know, when we when we had the concept of fuel, we had a, a direct referral that put the two of us together and we knew each other. But um, what what are the, the gal that referred Alex and I together said that you have what Alex needs and Alex has what you need. And that's a perfect partnership, right? When you have people that come together because they, they make each other more complete. And for us, it wasn't even one plus one, he and I equal two. It was like one plus one equals how many billions of people can we maybe impact around the world? <laughs> so I've, I've been in the speaking business for 30 years and I've written 22 books and I've hosted events and I've spoken at events and I've been on big stages and little stages and my smallest audience was five and my biggest audience was 70,000. And there's a commonality among that entire group. And the commonality is what do I do with what I just learned? 
And one of the things I learned early in my career was this law called the law of diminishing intent. The law of diminishing intent is that the longer you go from a learning to doing anything with a learning, the less likely you are to implement anything that you learn from the learning, right? So I started scratching my head and said, we've got to change that. We've got to come up with a formula. We've got to reinvent the learning process where people not only learn what to do, but then they can prove that they know how to do what they've learned. And so when mm -hmm. Alex and I started brainstorming, it was just like, it's not education that's, that's, that's missing, right? There's plenty of education, but it is education that is broken. And when people spend tens of thousands of dollars trying to learn by going to seminars, events, and books, there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem with all learning is that it doesn't involve an integration to prove that you know what to do. So I think the impetus for me was at one point I had a person come up and they had 32 pages of notes over four days. And they looked at me and they said, where do I start? And, uh, and, I, and I began to look at that and I go, this is the common problem. People do not know where to start and people do not know how to implement. So Alex and I created this company that, uh, that we feel not only innovates learning and education, but changes the entire notion of what alternative education looks like. So it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. It's great to be your partner, brother. And uh, it's, it's fun to see these multinational companies signing up. And whether it's an individual or somebody that runs a sales team of, you know, a thousand or 10,000, it doesn't matter. It's just like, let's help people win. Let's help people become the best version of themselves. And that's our, that's our rallying call. That's our North, North Star. If we can do that, then we don't need to worry about anything else. Hmm. Yeah, it's and it's you know it's it's one of those things where we're on this massive mission to democratize uh, training and learning because we know there is this have and have nots thing where if I have the money to afford to go see Todd, I'll probably outperform those that don't. If I have money to go and sign up for courses with Tony or sign up with courses with Jim Cathcart, or I could start naming all of these amazing instructors that are that are on our team at the moment. But if for some reason I don't have the finances, even if I have the desire, I am still behind. Stuck. This this levels the playing field completely. Okay, and so I'm going to share this. I'm going to go through this rather quickly because it's it's simple to understand. You'll see why it's simple uh, in just a moment. We have we have a a, a belief um, when it comes to simplicity. Uh, but first, let's just start with with the key here. So. If you're watching this, understand that Fuel is the world's first performance as a service platform, okay? The very first one, and you're going to understand the difference between what a performance as a service platform is and what a learning platform or training platform is. There's something very different about it. And Tony here, uh, not our Tony, but this other Tony, right? Tony on screen. <laughs> Our Tony is more popular than this Tony on screen, all right? Um, <laughs> so, look... Tony Robbins says, knowledge is the potential for power. Uh, the real power is in execution, right? And execution trumps uh, knowledge all day long. And so Fuel is an execution platform, a practice platform, a performance platform, okay? Who should be interested in this, okay? What sort of organizations, what's, what, what's, why should you do this? Right? Who should be attracted to something like this? Well, any organizations experiencing challenges with their revenue team, and this is important for people to start thinking about their team in this way, right? There are revenue teams and there are non-revenue teams. Revenue teams are your sales, your customer success, customer support, and your marketing team. Those are your revenue teams. Fuel is initially designed to boost those departments, boost the levels of, of performance in those departments. So if if you're having amazing success there, if the culture is amazing and the production and performance is amazing, that's great. Fuel doesn't replace what you're doing. It supplements. You'll see in just a second. If you're having challenges, then there's truly no better way to start seeing performance improvements in your team individually in the areas that you see below. If you're missing revenue targets, right, or 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 the, the confidence is low or your customer success isn't having renewals or the NPS scores are low or your lead gen is down and, and, and the enthusiasm in your marketing team is, is not there or retaining recruiting uh, talent is, is, is poor. That's who should be thinking about something like fuel, right? It's the only thing on the market today. So should be thinking about fuel and the value that it can bring because the value of that, and as a matter of fact, I'll just grab this one slide from this other place just, just to show, you know, 
the value that those teams get is you get a happier team, you get a more confident team, more skilled team, a team that, in, in, including your, your leaders, feel supported and feel heard, and the team that's actually having more fun. Okay, so that's that that's what happens. But let's let's really get into the philosophy of it. Fuel is, <clears throat> as Tony said earlier, the world's largest library of performance instruction. Okay, and performance instruction. Wait a second, Alex. Hold on a second. YouTube is the largest video library. Time out. We know. Okay, we're not arguing that. We're talking about performance instruction. You're going to see in a second the difference between just content and performance instruction. As Todd likes to say, fuel begins where YouTube ends, or where Vimeo ends, or where a uh, 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 keynote Keynote. ends. Yes, where those end, fuel begins. Let me explain. Okay, there's this one model, this brilliant model in the world, which is based on performance and culture, which is, it works on every piece of land and in every language, okay? That is the professional sports model. What has professional sports proven to us? That they can bring together, somehow there's a culture, you can bring people together with a common mindset, common goal, and when they join the team, they know that they need to perform better tomorrow than they did today. And every single person on the team wants them to perform better tomorrow than they did today. And then what do they do? They give every person on the team resources and access to become the best version of themselves, to be better tomorrow than they were today. That right there is a model we want to replicate for businesses, okay? But we don't want to replicate it through just pure information and education. It's about performance. And what's the difference? Well, knowledge is saying, I understand. Performing is proving, I understand. And fuel is a performance platform. It's a practice platform. This is a very important model here. This is a pyramid based on uh, the National Training Lab, which talks about the way that we humans retain information. Okay. And so to date, we've been going to events, reading, doing audio, visual demonstrations, discussions, all of these things. But as you can see, the pyramid shows very clearly, if you want to retain and retention is about performance, Just learning and not retaining means you can't put it into action. You can't implement. This is a practice platform. As you can see what the National uh, Training Lab says, 75% of the information that you practice gets retained. 75%. If you just heard it in an event, only 5%. If you read it, only 10%. If you practiced it, 75%. Fuels a practice platform. If you teach somebody something, 90% of what you teach them is retained. Fuel is also a teaching platform. You're about to see that in a second. We were inspired by two amazing platforms out there. One masterclass that inspired us because they proved that people are willing to, to digest content at their own time, at their own pace, for their own desires. Millions of people, and they're willing to follow educators, teachers that they believe in. They'll sit there for hours and digest that information for themselves, for their own personal development, for their own personal growth. Peloton has also also proven something very similar, okay? Peloton has made performance a visual thing where now people who want to ride to improve their performance, Todd being one of them, my my partner here is an avid rider. I mean, he just did 40 miles on one in one day, I think, what, this weekend? That was one of your rides, it was 40 miles? Yesterday morning. Yesterday morning, but Todd will tell you that he rides outside now for a different reason than he rides as Peloton. Peloton is for performance and outside is part of that, but it's not the same anymore. And literally, he he tells me all the time, and I've interviewed a lot of people that use Peloton for the same reason. When they see somebody, this is is the beauty of Peloton. Peloton makes you compete against everyone while only competing against yourself. Because when Todd is racing in, in California and he sees somebody from Jamaica right on his tail, He's not actually racing that person, but he's actually racing that person. And when he speeds up because he not, he's not going to let that person pass, his performance goes up. So visual performance tracking. How did he do on this course before? How did he, other people do? People in his age group, people not in his age group, right? Peloton made visual uh, a performance visual thing, but Peloton did something else very important, which is what Fuel borrowed from Peloton. They made instructors icons. Icons. I'm talking about people that had the exact course they were doing in Tampa Bay, Florida, for 50 people that would come to their class once a week. Now they have 50,000 people showing up. How is this possible? Peloton made people icons because they took their amazing content, their amazing personalities, and they opened it up to a whole new audience through their platform. That's Fuel. Fuel is taking the old and turning it into the new. We all had one of these bikes in our home. They might still be there, but now they're just paperweights or 
rug weights, whatever you want to call them. We now want to see performance. We now want to see ourselves get better. Um, and so we've done the same thing. What Peloton did for athletes, we've done for revenue teams, revenue-led teams, organizations with, with teams who are responsible for revenue for their organization, all right? We brought them together and we've made them take their content, okay? And remaster it for micro-learning. Very important. This is such a key element. Micro-learning is key here because our minds have changed. The way we digest information, the way we retain information has changed. And all previous learning and training is still based on the old style of learning here. As a matter of fact, it goes all the way back to factory days. Get everyone in a room and teach everyone the exact same thing the exact same way. It went from our schools to professional education to training across the board. We still put people in a room at the exact same time and teach the exact same thing to everyone the exact same way. That has transformed, okay? Fuel is now face, uh, based on four major pillars. And I'm gonna share my screen bigger because I want everyone to be able to read this. Four major pillars, self-mastery, life mastery, leadership mastery, sales mastery. There's a reason why they're in that order. Because anyone that reaches mastery of any sort does not focus on one single thing. They're not just sales technicians. They're not just great in sales. They're great people. They're great communicators. They're great listeners. They're great uh, uh, time managers. Okay. They're great leaders. All right. So you need to have a foundation and fuels is, is based on that, on a foundation where people can become the best version of themselves in any area they see fit, not just the areas you think they need to be uh, great at, but areas they see themselves and, and want to be great at, which by the way, will teach you a lot about your team. When your team, Todd and I talked about it this morning, this is the truth. When let's say you have 10 people on your team, just keep it small. And in one day, eight people choose to do a, let's just say uh, emotional intelligence course. I'm just, just making it up. Eight out of your 10 people choose to do that. What does that tell you about your team? It tells you something. But if you forced all 10 of those people to take an emotional intelligence course, what would that teach you? Nothing. All it would teach you is that you have an obedient team that will listen to you, but it tells you nothing about their interests, nothing about their abilities, they capable, <clears throat> where, where their mind is. They're just listening to your instruction. Okay. Before I start to show off the interface and, and give Todd a few minutes if, uh, before I jump into it, something very important to understand about fuel is this is a smart system. Okay. The system recalibrates to fit each individual's needs. Okay, this is very important. Each learner is unique. So if you take out your Instagram, your TikTok, your Spotify, your link, uh, your, your Netflix, your Amazon, and all of us were just to, I would stop sharing and everyone put the first screen up on their Instagram. Every single person on this call would have a different first screen. Why? Because Instagram and Spotify and Amazon recalibrate to you. But if I took your account, Tony, let's talk to our Tony here. If I took your account, Tony, your Instagram account, and for 45 days, I played with it. When you came back to it, 45 days later, you'd be like, I don't like any of this. Who is this for? This isn't for me anymore. Because Instagram recalibrates to Alex now because, oh, it's a new person. Okay, so you need things that this person doesn't need anymore. And it starts to offer up, offer up, offer up. And within, within 45 days or so, the platform is perfect at predicting the things that I like and what I would want to digest versus you. Fuel works the exact same way. It sits on our uh, NLPP. <clears throat> level performance path and within 60 days of engaging with the platform and 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 learning from it just playing the game nothing else just playing the game of making yourself a better version of yourself you will start to get recommendations based on you and based on how other people are performing in your company and in the industry and it will recommend to you ways to get to levels that other people have reached okay that's what it does it recalibrates for you so let's stop here for a second tony Todd, anything before I jump in and start to show people some some of the existing courseware? Yeah, I think I, I just would like to say to everybody that the 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 ideology behind fuel is to understand one simple truth that traditional learning is broken and it's broken because one size does not fit all. And the beauty of coming up with next level performance pathing is that anybody that wants to be their best version of themselves now has kind of a, an illumination of the path to get there. So if like, for example, um, let's just pick a number. Let's say I have five new relationships in a month. And that for me is like the goal that I've set. And I want to bring in five new partners or five new clients or five, whatever the number is. 
And then let's say that that the, the leader knows that my goal for the next month is to make that go to seven. And then there's somebody else that would like it to go only to four. And then there's somebody else that would like it to go to 12, just using whatever that measurable is. Mm-hmm. So what fuel, fuel does is it takes a look at the person that's at five that wants to go to seven. And as their trend lines start to go up, it starts to feed Intel and course recommendations from the next group up. So if I'm getting five as my goal and then I go to six, it's now going to start recommending video and training for the person that's doing seven or eight or nine. And so it actually creates this pathway. And we've heard, we've heard for years that success leaves clues, right? And the best, the best part of fuel, besides the fact that the lessons are short, micro, uh, digestible quickly, immediate action, and Alex will show you that in a minute, is that we are lighting the pathway for you. We're lighting the pathway. So many new salespeople, so many new people that get into business don't have this like jump start, and they they struggle, and they they kind of kind of get weighed down, and they kind of rake water and get stuck in the mud. And hey, there's a hundred million, two hundred million, eight billion people, and they mm-hmm. all are at a different spot in their life. They're all different. They're different where they are with their money. They're different where they are with their health. They're different where they are with their business. They're different where they are as leaders. They're, everybody is different. And so everybody needs a learning based on where they are. And so what Fuel does is it says, don't come to this seminar and let this one guy teach all 10,000 of you one thing. Let's have 10,000 of you come into Fuel and pick the thing you need to learn. And then let technology tell you the next thing. And that's the science behind micro learning. By the way, you can accelerate company growth and team performance by over 300% in just mm. six months of micro learning. Just think about mm. that for a second. So long form learning is out. Micro learning is in and it's a $400 billion industry. And so that proves that people want to learn on the go, learn anything you want, anywhere you are at any time you'd like on any device you'd like. That's the promise of fuel. Yeah, I love that. So oh, you were talking good, about, this you were talking about education is broken. I was like, you know what? Let me let me throw well, that let in. Let me show the house. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's so true though. I mean, look, yeah. everyone that's listening to this, this is a conversation, not just a presentation. Education is broken. One size fits all approach. Come on, how many of how many of us on this call have kids and and just are are absolutely uh, horrified by what's happening in schools and and. One size fits all approach. All right, everybody, third grader, you should be doing this by third grade. I've been doing that since first grade. Or I don't know if I'll be able to do that until fifth grade. But nope, everyone, same thing in in business, right? Everyone needs to be able to do this. Well, I I was born in another country and I speak a different language and I'm not sure if I can do it that way, right? Um, So I I just, just the top line alone, Todd, right? Like it blows my, just the top line alone is enough. Solving that is enough to impact millions and t- hundreds of millions of people into a, well, into a place where they can be better. And for it's themselves. even, yeah, it's even taking like, you guys all read books, right? It's like taking a book and it's to realize, I mean, I've written 22 of them. Um, one book and one title meets every reader at a different place. Right? right. And so, so why make the book the goal? Why don't we make the chapter the goal? Oh, by the way, the chapter's got four pivotal parts in it. Let's deconstruct the chapter, bring the four pivotal parts into micro learning. And then that way, anybody can learn that chapter because I'm intrigued by the chapter. And oh, by the way, I don't need to read 22 pages. I need to watch, I don't know, four, three minute videos, take a couple of tests, and then I got it, right? So this is so powerful that you can't just, I mean, you look at any fast food restaurant, they don't have one product. Because everybody wants something different. Learning is the same way. You can't say, let's have this session and come because you're an employee of this or you're a part of this brand. Let's not do that. Let's let people choose their learning. Let's let people meet themselves where they are to have their best version of them come out, right? So, And you meet them where they are, right? They show you where they are and then you meet them there. (laughs) They they show you. But when you force people, you can never tell where they are. They are where you put them and then you own it instead of they own it. Right. And by the so, learning, by the way, learning should never be forced. It right. should be fun and free. There should be autonomy. There should not be force. There should be freedom to learn, not just like, hey, you gotta, you gotta, this is the next course. Come in. This is the next thing. You have to learn. You have to learn. No. Yeah. Let yeah. me choose what I need to learn because I mean, I need your guidance. I'd like you to be my leader. I'd like you to kind of rec- I'd like you to set some goals with me. I like that. Right. But 
I'm going to learn different things at different points in time because I'm at a different place. When I'm a hundred yes. million dollar producer, I need different skills than when I'm a one million dollar producer. Period. Yes. End of story. Yes. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Well, this this was this 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 was exciting conversation, uh, completely unscripted for all of you to hear because that is how we think about things like this, and it's powerful. You should know because we are constantly behind the scenes challenging everything, going, "How do we make this better? How do we make this better? How do we make this better?" That's all we're thinking. How do we make the instructors give better instruction and be able to get more out of people? How do yeah. you, the learner, <clears throat> how can you get more out of this and make it easier and and more um, uh, uh, digestible for you? So. Just know we're we're having these these deep conversations constantly, um, and so I'm going to start with one real quick one because Todd does a great job explaining what this entire series is about. And I'm going to jump into some others, and you all will get to see how this is what this is about, how this works. So watch this, and and I'll have it fast, and I'll skip through some things, but you'll understand. Hey, it's Todd Duncan. Welcome to Fuel's Short Shots, the ultimate micro lesson. These short shots are designed in five to maybe seven minutes max to give you one idea that you can use in business and in life. Test your performance knowledge of that idea and then encourage you to come back time and time again as you perfect that idea. Remember, micro learning is about the continued aggregation of marginal gain over time. So these ideas, the first time you hear them, are not going to be the only growth you get out of them. You got to keep coming back to Fuel because the ideas keep getting amplified larger and larger and larger. Also recommend that you have your success journal. This is mine. I take this everywhere I go. Uh, I've been doing success journals for over 35 years and I write down everything that I learned no matter where I learn it from because you never know when you're going to need it. Enjoy short shots. Let's go. So for everyone listening, I spoke to someone that got into the platform on Wednesday last, last week for the first <laughs> time. Spoke to him today and he said to me, uh, he went out and bought a journal this weekend. Besides what he put, what's what he's putting into the platform, he went and got a journal and was reminded the power of the journal. He used to journal, stop journaling. This lesson right here was like, I gotta go, and he and he got it, and he got it. I saw it. He showed it to me. It's a blue journal, so he's got it. Uh, besides what he's putting into the platform. Okay, so this is a this is a really quick example. Um, I want to show everybody a really cool example of of uh, mastering social media. I think this is an awesome course. You'll see this entire 11 lessons <clears throat> you've done in 27 minutes. Okay? Let me say something before you push play. So I yeah. want you guys to think right now, if you look at underneath the, uh, underneath the, uh, the progress bar, the lesson is three minutes and 21 seconds. And you'll notice on that bar towards the far right, there's four icons. The technology that our company has built allows the video to stop without anybody pushing stop and take the learning and turn it right to the learner's experience. And you'll see right here that there's four tests in a three minute and 21 second lesson. It's really important for you to hear what I just said. Under four minutes, four tests to prove that you understand how to do what Josh has just taught you. So watch this. Yeah, this is, I don't know, I'm frozen on screen, so let me unfreeze oh. myself. Okay, so watch this, and I'll, I'll skip through it, just I'll set it up, I'll skip through it, and you'll see the performance tests. Now that we've got quite a bit of this process figured out, it's time to make the message. And I know it may be easy to just hit the record button and start rambling about whatever, but you really want to create content that's valuable, that's informational to your audience. So we're going to help you set that up. We're going to put together a process for you and an outline to really dial in your message. First, you want to come up with a video hook. A Okay, so he tells you the he goes through the process, he explains it to you. And, and a matter of fact, I love this. He puts it all together. He kind of says, here's the hook, here's the problem, here's the solution, here's the call to action. If do this in social media, and here it is, you got it. All right. And then he goes, ready? You should know this. If you're in real estate, did you know that home sales are doing this? Or a great one, can you believe Taylor Swift wore that? Go ahead and write your video hook down now. Write your video hook down now. Now I have to act. This is me. My video hook, okay, is <laughs> right. Whatever it is, now watch this. This is so important. Everyone watching, in understanding how to lead people, inspire people, give them what they need to watch them grow, used to feel like it has to be forced. Like, what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately? But watch what Fuel does. So I'm on your team, and I just took this this course on social media. You as a leader now learn something about me. You've now learned that my interest is in social media. Now, look, your answer will be shared with your leader. So now you can actually see how I'm practicing, okay? You can actually see what I'm doing. Perfect, now that you have that down, it's time to write down the problem that the viewer is facing. 
keep going. I'm literally creating my first post right here uh, or, or a series of posts, the problem, right? And I can keep going and I can keep going and I can keep going. The point is, as a leader, when you see this come across, uh, your, your, and you will be re reminded, by the way, you know, our system will remind you uh, here, lessons that need review. Our system will remind you who needs um, your your support now and who on your team is, is is practicing things and what they're practicing. So we'll show you where their attention is, where their heart is, where their thoughts are. And so remember, it's practice. Practice is the retention. Now you can support them in where they believe they need to be. Oh, Alex, you're practicing. Did you know we have an award-winning social media person on our team that does this for our people? Did you? Did you? I didn't know that. I knew we had a marketing department. I didn't know. Yes, you're interested in this. Finish this, and then yeah, get with this, and come back and come back and come back. And all of a sudden, because you know how often people don't want to tell you what's really on their mind in front of a, a large group, they're just like, I don't know how I'm going to be looked at, so I'm not even going to bring up what I'm really thinking about. I'm going to bring up the surface layer stuff that everyone is okay with hearing, but. You will get to learn about your people in ways you've never imagined. You will know them better in the first 60 to 90 days of, of them turning on fuel than you've ever known them before because you're actually going to get to see what is interesting to them, what's challenging, what challenges they're facing. Yeah, and I think one thing I'd like to say to everybody that's yeah. viewing this that's a leader is lack of knowing your team and lack of knowing where their drive is and lack of knowing what their goals are and lack of knowing how they're practicing is irresponsible as a leader. And Fuel is designed to increase the connectivity between leader followers so that the leader and the follower have more influence together. And the beauty, the beauty, anybody that's studied leadership knows that people follow you for only two reasons. They follow you because they want to, which means you've made an impact in their life, or they follow you because they have to, which is the wrong kind of followership, right? Mm. So what this does, this actually gives leaders back one, two, three hours a day, depending on how big your revenue team is. And the bottom line is when you get connected to your team and you know what they're learning, then you can support them. Like there's, yes. when, when, when Alex shows you some of the performance stuff, um, you can actually set goals with your team. And you can set goals on how much money do they want to make next month or how many hours would they like to work or what is their trend line, right? And so make no mistake about this. Everybody leads somebody, team of one, team of 100,000, team of a million. But at the end of the day, if you don't know what your people are learning and doing, then you have no influence over them. Yes. And, and this is one of those things where often leaders stop being heard. Right. Oh, you've said this a thousand times. And then somebody like Todd comes in and says it once. and like, oh my gosh, what? <laughs> that's brilliant. And Tony's over there going, I've said this a thousand times, but it's not about what they say. It's when they say it, who says it and how they say it. Our leaders, you leaders that are listening to this are often like pulling your hair out. Well, you need something that will share that message in a whole new way. This is that kind of unlimited access. This is why in athletics, okay, in sports, this is why practices exist. Who sees you practice? Your coaches. <laughs> Why? So that you can play better when you get in the game. This is the practice. This is the practice platform. You practice, you practice, you practice, then you can become better. By the way, not just practicing in, in, in career, there's also all of the personal development, energy. There's three different energy courses with meditation and time management and, and all kinds of things, communication courses, and a new course being added every single week, every single week. It's, it's, it's remarkable. Um, I was going to jump into this one. I don't know if it's necessary. I think you all understand oh. now. Um, there's, I don't think there's... so. Let's shift. let's let's pass Brian. Brian, by the way, <clears throat> loves 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 fuel, and he's uh, he, his brand is breakthrough, and right. he's got a he's got a spirit. He's helped millions of people around the world, and he's an instructor for us, and just a great guy. But same kind of thing here. Every lesson, this lesson is six minutes long, and you'll see at the very end there's a there's one performance test. So every single le you cannot watch a lesson without proving to the system that you understand the lesson. Yeah, there there are some that are educational, but you'll yeah, see Yeah, but out. yeah. But but most but, but most every not most everything is based on performance, but there are right. some lessons that are just hey, know this because you're going to get do, yeah, do yeah. a performance thing in the next lesson. And you've only seen written, seen written things, but there's video, audio like hey, how would Trips. you how would you respond to this <laughs> objection? Right? Um, or, or use this script or use that message, or how would you leave a voicemail? Those are also prompts and performance practices that people have in here as well. And so, um, 
getting to the to the last part of this, and this is very important. The the library is is unlimited and and will continue to grow uh, uh, forever. The system is also built in performance platform, performance analytics. This is optional, highly recommended. It doesn't cost anyone a thing to turn this on. As a matter of fact, if you just wanted to turn on the, turn on the performance analytics in the library, great, it doesn't cost you a thing, okay? The performance analytics is for you and you'll see how powerful it is. It's one metric that rules them all, that really can replace all other metrics to identify the health and the performance of your revenue team. So people who are responsible for driving revenue in your company, sales, customer success, and marketing. For instance, let's look at sales, for instance, here. I'm looking at Liam. By the way, you can see your entire team, okay? What is the metric you're looking at? The most powerful metric in all of the business world, hourly rate. The heart rate is the most powerful way to see the health of a person. Hourly rate is the most powerful way to see the health of a salesperson or somebody responsible for revenue. It is the most powerful way. We won't take a ton of time explaining that here. We have other sessions that you can attend. We can explain to you exactly why this is the most powerful session, but you'll start to see some of it here. If I was to look at Liam and his hourly rate uh, from June 15th uh, to, to uh, yeah, June yesterday, 15th, yesterday. To, to July 14th, yet to yesterday, you'll notice that he has a tra trajectory that his hourly rate is going up. Liam does not need the exact same training as Amelia. But you know what happens right now in their group? They get the exact same training because yeah. we have no clue about trends and where people are going. We have one number that happens once a month and whatever they tell us between the months. And so we put everyone through the same process when this is clearly a situation where what Amelia needs is not the same thing as what Liam needs. And the fuel system will recognize that, recalibrate and make recommendations for the leader and for the learner together. And so this is the beauty. It requires very, very limited information. An income number and hours worked. That's it. We do the rest. We also have some other things that we can collect, like how many conversations to close the deal so we can start doing closing ratios. Again, very easy, very easy, limited information. And it never requires somebody's personal private information. We don't need their last names. We don't need their socials. We don't need any of that. We don't even need their first names if you don't want to give it. An email is enough because this information isn't for us. It's for you. And it's not even for you. It's for you to help your uh, your team, right? And so uh, very basic to get the analytics running. And this is the thing that helps you expedite the transformation of the people on your team and yourself. And to hey, all Alex. the executives. Mm -hmm. show, them team, show them team goals just because this is the leadership piece we were talking about that anybody on the anybody on the team can have a conversation with you and we can then set goals with our team and get pinged on their progress towards that goal which is missing from most leaders and managers day-to-day -day stuff yeah and and key, and very simple right this everything you're seeing here we can show you in minutes there's no complexity here at all one right before i go into goals hey executives the same way that you're measuring the success uh and the the trends of your uh that your leaders are measuring that for their individual sales performers you can measure that for entire teams you can see here team hourly rate right so if your team hourly rate going up or down you can tell the leader how the leader is doing. So if I have 144 on average, our team hourly rate, but Todd's got 400 and Tony's got 500, guess who's sticking out like a sore thumb? Is it the leader or is it the team? Something's going on. One metric to rule them all. And as Todd mentioned, very simple goal setting, very simple. Again, following the one metric. Amelia is at $152 uh, dollars an hour. And again, why hourly rate so important? If Amelia's hourly rate goes up, you, the company, makes more money. If she's making more money, that means you're making more money. She's in sales. She's commissioned. So a percentage of that goes to you. A percentage of that goes to her. That's why that hourly rate metric is so important. Well, you sit down with Amelia and you talk to her and you find out that between you and her, you believe that her goal should be $200 an hour by the end of September. You set that goal. And now the system will start to show you if she's trending in the right direction or the wrong direction. Um, very simple. Very simple. That's it. I mean, it's two seconds to do that. Um Reviewing your, your team's lessons, also two seconds. Again, I won't go too deep into it, but I can tell what course Todd worked on, uh, what his responses were, and I can tell him they were great. I can even record a response for him. Thank you for doing it, Todd, or, or hey, 
I, you need to practice this over and over again. That was really bad. Uh, <laughs> you know, right? But not for you, Todd. We know you were <laughs> always good. Always good. Um, all right. Well, we'll stop here. I don't know if if uh, if price or investment is important to talk about in this in this call or not. What do you think, Tony? Yeah. Yes, I absolutely would love to talk about that. Okay, perfect. So why don't I go ahead and show that real quick on screen? Because uh, it's simple. I so, told somebody today. I told somebody today because they asked that question. I said it's about the equivalent of one ounce of one vente Starbucks coffee per day. <laughs> yeah. And I go, why? What? One ounce? Why not the whole yeah. cup? Because it's like I don't know, way cheaper than that. <laughs> Seventy-two cents a day. That's twenty-two dollars a month. That is two hundred sixty-four dollars for the entire year for unlimited access to to this platform which has content added every single week. Um, so we've, when we, when you try to democratize something so important, you have to make it affordable. Um, and this is, this is our way of saying, Hey, we believe everyone should have access to, to the best instruction to become the best versions of themselves. This is us proving it. Um, and you know, when, when you have that, when you have that, um, you know, this is what happens by practicing every skill that allows you to serve at the highest levels. You have immediate app impact on you, your team, and your family. That's fuel. And I think the other thing I would say is by this, you have growth, which means you have loyalty, which means you don't have to recruit as hard, which means you have less turnover, which means you have higher profitability, which means you have, I mean, you just keep going and going and going. And people actually feel that when they see, the investment that um, that that they can make in themselves or a team leader can make in them or with them, they start to feel how much the leader actually loves them. And, you know, it's it, the, the, the unfair thing in most businesses is to not provide the access like we're talking about providing for fuel and to have people realize each and every day that I need I need something right now that I'm not getting from my company. We don't want turnover. We want to be able to recruit and keep people and and, yes. uh, and build businesses. And the, the best way to retain people is help them win, period. End of story. Mm -hmm. if, if somebody is on your team and they are winning because you have an apparatus that allows them to learn on demand and practice, they're never going to go anywhere. And they will tell everybody that they are in that circle with, I don't know if you want to come over here. I don't know if you're looking for a change, but this company, this leader, this whatever, absolutely amazing. And I think... This whole thing started with somebody saying, I'm tired of losing people. What should I do? And I told him this is two years ago. I told him, I said, you should overtrain them. So they want to stay. Yep. And it was, it was that illuminating. It was that people, people leave organizations um, theoretically, but they actually leave leaders and they leave yes. the leader because the leader's not leading. Well, and I think it's important to, to also talk about the opposite side of this. So like for everyone watching, if you want it to be done, you could be done right here. But I have something very uh, controversial to bring up, okay? Because the opposite side of this is letting go of the people that don't want to be coached, led, and become better versions of themselves. How do I identify those? It's been so difficult, okay? It's been difficult because we deal with people. And we know people have hearts and souls and families and things and and we look into their eyes and we want to give them another chance. And this is one of those things where when you have fuel on, you will know exactly who wants to invest in themselves and who believes in themselves and who doesn't. And so when you have a situation like that and you have this unlimited access to this library of performance that is literally designed for people to love on themselves, and you look at somebody's performance and it's flat or going down and you look and they haven't logged into the platform for three weeks or four weeks, well, there's, there's a, it's very clear. OK, I'm going to give you an example that's outside of business, because I think it is it is the best example of why performance and culture is at such high levels in professional sports. OK, when and I'm going to bring up some names, hopefully people know them. I'll explain to them if, if they don't know them. Somebody like Brett Favre. OK, he's a quarterback in the NFL, was a quarterback in the NFL. He was a quarterback. And he would be still a quarterback if he could play at the levels the team wanted him to play at. He would still be there today. They still love him to death. The entire state of Wisconsin would, would get tattoos of Brett Favre on their necks if he could come back and play at the levels he used to play at. But guess what? His performance is no longer meeting the minimum standards 
And so Brett Favre is not there. I can make examples of that over and over and over again. Just yesterday, Di Maria, who plays for Argentina, who just won the Copa America last night, okay? He retired, okay? And he got applaud. He said, he'll never play for the national team again. He got an applaud. And one of the things that, that, that the commentator said is what amazing leadership to know that you've reached a level where the new players that are on the team are just starting to surpass you. And you're like, I still have the ability to play, but not as good as them. I'm retiring. Okay. So in business, it's different because again, heart, soul, eyes, right? We, we, And so here's the controversial flip side of, I can help you become a better version of yourself where you are hitting your head against a wall with someone who does not want to become a better version of themselves. Okay. They don't, but you don't know that, but now you do. You will now very clearly know when somebody does not want to make improvements, they can tell you anything they want, but their actions speak louder than words. The assignments you've given them, when you start to review their, their lessons completed, where they're focused, and you're seeing that there's no, you're not asking them to do courses just for you. You're saying, hey, there are things for yourself, and you're not even doing that. And your numbers are the worst in, in, in the team. You don't have to think anymore. Now it becomes very clear. It's a non-biased approach. You're not making improvements on yourself. How are you going to make improvements on uh, with this team, right? Easy. And so we didn't go into this. But we've made it easy because in the platform, we have leagues. And those leagues are categorized from the top performers, right? The people that are that are all stars winning, winning awards and the people that are trying to get to the next level. The very bottom is the starter league. And everyone that's listening to this, your starter league is your elimination league. You tell people you have a certain amount of time to stay in this league. If you're in this league, after this amount of time, you're no longer part of this team. This is equivalent to tryouts in sports. Okay. People don't make teams and sports for dreams. They make teams and sports for their ability. Skills. I dream of scoring a hundred goals. You're hired. No, that would never happen. You, you got a dream of scoring a hundred goals, run around the track. Let me see if you can even run as fast as the rest of the team. It's your ability, not your dreams. Once you have the ability, we can help you make those dreams, right? But until you have the ability, you can't even start to make those dreams happen. And so start thinking about your people that way as well. Start thinking about your team in that if you can't operate at the minimum performance standards, you can't be on this team. Very simply, with, with love and respect and care for the person, you can't play this team. I'll give one example and then we'll move on or maybe end it. I don't know. I'm five foot five, even though you saw me standing next to Todd, who is six foot five, and I look like I was his height. Hollywood is a beautiful thing. Um, <laughs> if I wanted to be a center in the NBA and a coach made me a center in the NBA, Whose mistake is that? Mine or the coach's? coach's. Probably the coach, <laughs> right? Because I can't get any rebounds against seven foot tall people. I can't do it. I'm supposed to, but I can't do it. And so guess what? I would never even make the team. They would not allow that to happen. In business, it's a little different. Tryouts aren't the same. But now with this, you can actually see who's investing in themselves and wants to be a better version and who's not. And you need to be supporting those that want to be the best version of themselves. That's how you get out of this 80-20 principle, where 20% of people are producing 80% of the results. You will now have 80% of people present uh, creating 80% of the results. That's that's a team. So flip side of, 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 of the coin of wanting people to become the best versus people who just simply won't ever want to be that. And don't waste your time on them. Love them, but don't waste your time on them. Wow. Uh, that is a, that is a great way to maybe start to wrap this up. I would just say, <laughs> I would just say that the interesting thing is for leaders, there's this thing called drag down cost, and drag down cost is when you try to keep people that shouldn't be there. You you try to breathe life into people that just don't want it bad enough. We had somebody, Alex, last Monday that signed up in fuel. And I think in five days went through 18 lessons. Yeah. That's somebody, that's somebody who wants to win and somebody who wants to become their best version of themselves. But here's the interesting thing to that 80, 20 principle. Most leaders are spending 80% of their time with the 80% of the people that are only producing 20% of the volume. And when you right. look at like, when you look at don't water the weeds as a leadership concept, when you look at give your best to your best. Most leaders give their best to their worst because the worst drag down the entire team. So let's, let's cut bait. Let's help people find their pathway. Let's do it, Alex, as you said, with respect and love. But it's interesting, yes. if you were to just think about the time that you allocate to people that, that aren't ready to, to really become the best version of themselves and the people that you know already are, where's most of your time going? 
And now you have a platform that's going to cause automatic deselection. It's going to yes. absolutely cause the separation of talent. And you guys know this, the, the top 50% of any organization can do 90% of the business if you invest in the top 50%. And the bottom 50, there's going to be some people that want to grow, but there's going to be people no matter what you do. You know, CPR, you know, yeah. knock them out. It's just not going to Whatever. Work. That's okay. They shouldn't be there in the first place, but the, the professional thing to do is help them see that and help them find their best path. Everybody's got their best path. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and look, Tony, I, whatever editing you end up doing to this video, Todd, what you're talking about, I think you and I had this kind of, it's, it's worth, if you want to, anyone wants to drop off, drop off. But if you want to include this somewhere, you and I talked about this, Todd, listen to this, everyone. This is, this is your kid comes home. Okay. With a report card, three A's, three B's, two C's. What does the parent focus on? Exactly. <laughs> right? How do we get those C's to be, son? Instead of going like, you're a genius in math. You got A's and let's get you into some bigger. No, you got a C in, in English and, and history. Yeah, you're going to be a math. You're going to build software and develop stuff. But I need you to get history right. And it's like, wait, what? We're focusing on the things that I'm weak at rather than strengthening my strengths. That's exactly what Todd is talking about. This goes all the way back to all the ways we've all been brought up. Oh, this is your weakness. Make it stronger. <laughs> One of my favorite stories, Ingrid from uh, from uh, uh, PepsiCo, when she took over, which by the way, caught up to, to, to Coca-Cola. When she came in, it's one of my favorite stories of all time of great leadership. She had somebody write on a big board, all the things they're good at, Pepsi, and all the things they're bad at. And I, she brought in the entire executive team. She goes, you see these two things? You see all these things that we're bad at? We're no longer doing them starting today. People are like, wait, no, but that's my... We're no longer doing them starting today. today. Today, She's like, no, we're not going to wind them down today. She cut it off right there. And we all know the story of Pepsi under her leadership, crushed, yeah. I mean, dominating. And so that's just to your point, Todd, exactly to your point. Well, everybody's got DNA. Everybody's got a skill. And my early mentor said, don't get it. Don't try to get good at what God left out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You have a special skill. You have a superpower. Don't try to get good at stuff you're not good at. You're all we're all wired in a unique way, but uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, you can't. You my, <laughs> you know, Mac. My friend wrote a book. Don't send a duck to eagle. Eagle school. <laughs> yes. A duck is a duck. An eagle's an eagle. A fish is never going to be able to climb a tree. Let's get people into their strength zone to their super zone, which is, I think, what fuel does. So, Tony, you're the best. This has it. been so Thank fun. You. So good. So fun. So fun. So how do people take action? So this is how people take action. One, they have to contact me. Um, you know, they can either message me on Instagram at Tony Vans Official. Um, ideally, the best way that they can get a hold of me so that I can share the platform with them is to email me at um, support, S U P P O R T, at T Tony, T O N I, V as in Victor A N S dot com. And then that way we can get them started and I can get them uh, an email invitation and then they can start, you know, uh, getting back in there and, and really examining. And just to say, um, you know, gentlemen, when I downloaded the app and I started doing lessons a week ago, um, I was, I, I'm still amazed at the amount of retention that I have um, from, you know, and Todd, I've watched most of yours and all of uh, Brian uh, Byros, but the, the amount of retention, like you said, because I normally don't retain this, I don't normally, re you know, remember the acronyms and everything like that. And like the woo, the ETP and all that. I mean, it just, <laughs> right? right? It just, it, <clears throat> and I, I, you know, like the woo is the window of opportunity, right? And so even though I have listened to multiple lessons, it has stuck and I have never had that oh, happen good. before. So it, it does work. And I am a lifelong learner. So, so good. Yes. It's so good. I, I love that you're mentioning this. It's so, so good. The retention is, in, I saw Jay shaking his head too. Jay, do you have a story about retention also? No, but I saw you say, shaking your head. I was like, oh, maybe he's got no, one too. You know, what I was thinking about and what this whole thing has kind of reminded me of, Todd, is your book, High Trust Selling, right? This, to me, feels like the evolution of that, yes. right? Because- yes. I mean, a relationship is based on long-term trust, 
Right. Well, this is sort of like that on steroids where, you know, you have high trust coaching, high trust leadership, high trust development of your team and putting this much effort into all these people builds that trust. And I just think it's, this is, first of all, it's cool, but it's just fascinating how this platform is going to affect people that they don't even realize yet. Yes. And that that's what I was I was nodding about, Alex, was just the impact. You know, when Tony's talking about lifelong learners, she is a lifelong learner. I've known her her entire life. <laughs> and which good or bad, right? But okay. it's just <laughs> it's how our brains work. These yeah. short-term things, it's just fascinating. <clears throat> and I love it. I this thing is fat. So when I was nodding along, that's what was going through my mind. Well, you know, we see Tina, she has her, her, her child there with her. This is for her, for, for her child. Like this is for all the generations coming out of uh, high schools and colleges. And like, how am I going to make sure that I have a career that supports my growth? This is it. This is for them. This is designed for the next generation, this generation too, but truly for all those amazing kids you have there, Tina, like that's, it's for them. It's for them to be able to come out and be like, okay, what did I Am I going to be able to put my talent to, to work and will people support my, my own individual growth or will I be stuck in an organization that wants me to do things just their way? And it's like, no, this is fuel is the way, right? It's like Mandalorian. This is the way. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, cool. I, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I cannot wait to get this recording into the hands of, of you know, people that are um, looking to help increase their productivity and also the recognition piece of it is huge. So oh, yes. I think that that was brilliant building that on the back end as well, because that's really where, I mean, that's really where the stickiness is, especially in any kind of <clears throat> performance uh, platform. Yes. Yes. And Tony, I just want to affirm something because I, I think the official presentation is over. I got a text at one twenty-seven, and it said, what's up? I'm listening on a zoom call right now. Um, I happened to stumble across it on Tony's post. Was this a private call? So this is a friend of mine that you don't know that has been on the entire Zoom call because he saw you on social posting it. And I told him a little bit about you and he happens to be a real estate investor. How cool is that? <laughs> that, that is awesome. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So um, pretty crazy, man. Pretty crazy. The power okay. of social media. That's right. That's right. Power of connection. There's a course for that. <laughs> there is a course for that. There's a course for that. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. Take care, you guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank thanks you. for hanging out, guys. See ya.